if things didn't go right, I was an easy scapegoat, put it that way. Mm-hmm. And, and I was okay with that. But, you know, some people can't handle it, couldn't handle the pressure. Or they would put their head down and, you know, it would just mess their whole game up or mind up. I just said, all right, you can blame me as much as you want. Let's just go out and play and leave me alone for right now kind of thing. And, uh, you know, so many people like, uh, I don't know if you guys remember Billy Walsh that used to play the Metro stars and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, he goes, these guys were so dumb that they didn't take advantage of you. He goes, you were like the Dennis Rodman of soccer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Crack Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Crack Podcast. You're on with Demarcus Beasy, Aguchi, and Yewu. And my name is Mauricio Muki Wilson. We're so happy to be back. Thank you for The Crack crew for tuning in. Fellas, how we feel today? It's been a minute. It has been a minute. Look at bees hasn't shaved. I got some stuff. I got some stubble. <laughs> I don't never shave though. Man, if I if I if I shave, I look like I'm I'm 15 years old. Our friends have cursed us out, stating that um you know we haven't recorded recently, but you know we, we wanted to kind of you know wait for a special guest that we have um, on air today. In my eyes, he's a legend. Uh, he's a World Cup scorer. He's a MLS All Star. And to me, and my, my, my co-host might beat me up on this, but he's the best Clint to ever play for the U.S. national team. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about Clint Mattis. Oh, wow. Wow. Didn't, you just, wait, didn't you just say in the last episode that Clint Dempsey was the best American soccer player ever? He did. This man's a bandwagon. And then now, now he's you the say best Clint, Clint. Yeah, you can't, Clint. Yo, we, you, you can't just, trust just, a New Yorker. Yeah. You can't trust a New Yorker, man. We, we literally just spoke to Dempsey. And you said that he was the best American soccer player for you. He's just yeah, trying now. to get MS, He's just trying to get MSG tickets. And, and that's <laughs> and that's and that's because Clint didn't get an opportunity to have the career that Dempsey had. You Why know? didn't he have the opportunity? He had injuries. He we he, all have injuries. That's, he that's didn't not, have that, success. What, he didn't have. How does that success. have anything to do with opportunity? He didn't have a long stint in Europe, and and he's a, a victim of the time period that he played in. <laughs> Wow. Hey, yo, I see you laughing while you say it. Yeah, he don't even believe his words. Yeah, he don't believe it. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I'm here to instigate and cause issues, but you know, there's always some truth in that, right? And, Look, and, at the end uh, of the yeah, day, uh, yeah, Clint was a man. Clint, Clint was legit. Yeah. He was he was yeah. the first America bad boy, real talk. Yeah. Like he set the path for a lot of people, and people don't even know about that. So I'm excited to have him on. Yeah, me too. Me too. Clint, if Clint played for the Metro Stars, um, while being here in New York, he's the first soccer player I see live a really a rock star NBA lifestyle. You know, um, he had the restaurants on lock, the clubs on lock. The man had a sprint deal. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> but he's, this, this, is time, this is a time period where making long distance phone calls, you get charged extra, you know, mm-hmm. and this man had a phone where he, he didn't have to pay a bill. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> now that's normal. He's got a sprint deal. Everybody got a sprint hey, deal. I got hey, as soon as I got I retired, I got cut off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, wait, you retired two months ago? I right, yeah, sorry, this phone's been disconnected. <laughs> we don't need you. Did, did they keep did they let you keep the phone? Yeah, they let me keep the phone. All right, that's they, at least that. At least yeah, that. But nah, they cut the they, I got that deal cut short real quick after I retired. <laughs> um real gonna, we're gonna be a little bit different today with Clint Mathis. He's gonna call in. Um, you know, he's on the road. He has a different lifestyle now. So Clint will be calling in. So I'm excited for that, regardless to speak to this man. And I think he'll give us a little bit more since he's not in the house with his kids and his uh his wife. You know, I think he'll be a little more truthful, you know. We live oh, the glory man. days. I, he has no reason to lie. We yeah. live the we live the glory days, man. <laughs> but talk about glory. United States has beaten Mexico in a final. Of a, of a cup. Yeah, it's a cup. Nations League Cup. The first 
first inaugural, I don't know what the hell it is. I don't know how it's <laughs> from, the world, from the Gold Cup, but they have won a championship. And I think it's so, so, so important for Greg Berhalter and the young core that they have. Guys, did you see the game? Obviously, uh, Gooch did, and I heard Beasley was on the field. Tell me what your <laughs> thoughts were. Did you cry? Did you get yeah, flashbacks you on the road at today. times where you this beat Mexico? Something today. You on a you on a road today? Yeah, you on a road crazy. today. Nah, I mean, yeah, nah. I I uh, was was just like any other American fan. I was happy um, the way they played, the way they battled back, the way they showed resilience in the game. You know, all those all those words that. Um, uh, everyone's already described about the national team as far as how they got the job done, how they got the job done against Mexico. So, mm-hmm. you know, for me being now, obviously being a fan uh, of U.S. soccer, I was happy to see them win the win it for one beat our rivals. And really, that was the first time in a long time. And I didn't see I haven't seen anybody talk about this, but the first time in a long time where it, it felt like a rivalry. Yeah. The last couple of times. That's not, and that's kind of why I asked Weston that that, that question uh, mm-hmm. back in his episode. The last couple of times I've seen USA play Mexico, and this is on both teams, it was soft. Yeah. There was no, there was, you know, it was just they wanted to play the game and wanted to get out as quick as possible. They didn't have that that fiery, that fiery edge, you know what I'm saying, to the match. So I was I was happy to get that they got back to that. And then, you know, they won. So I was happy to see them uh, lift the cup. Yeah, I, I doubled down on that. I wasn't, let's say I wasn't pleased with their performance. I was p- pleased with their character because for a long time, everybody's been saying that this young group has all the talent in the world. They just don't have the heart. And that game for 90 plus minutes, extra time, you saw the heart. They didn't come back once. They came back twice and they beat Mexico. And I think this is the first, oh yeah. Cause the last couple um, uh matchups, Mexico has beaten them in the gold cup final after that as well. Um, so for me, I, w- I was proud. And I, I think I saw, or I felt at least the players understanding the importance of these games against CONCACAF teams and that it's not easy, right? Like regardless of where you're playing in Europe, you know, they understand now, you know, playing Honduras, it's not a guaranteed win. Playing Mexico is definitely not a guaranteed win. And they they have some, uh, they took some growing pains from this tournament. I'm glad that they were able to finally lift a trophy because everybody's been waiting to hear them lift a, a trophy as a national team. So, you know, Bees has lifted hundreds of trophies in his, in his day, you know, so I'm, I'm happy that these boys were able to essentially confirm their seasons, you know, cause they won 13 titles overseas and now come back home and, and get this uh, nation's league title. I want to say, right, yeah, if I say grumpy, we'll go, yeah, go ahead. Now I want to say a big shout out to Greg Berhalter. I'm the first one to say, that Greg is is an experience. I'm the first one to say that, you know, I think that the United States deserve an experienced international coach. But Greg Berhalter made some key decisions. Um, he got the win. And I just want to give a round of applause to Greg. Uh, round of applause to you. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, this builds confidence in yourself and your program and what you're trying to provide. And also, I think that for the players as a whole, like you guys said, this is um, hopefully what catapult them into a good momentum going into the World Cup qualifying and uh, and, 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 and getting to the World Cup uh, as a strong uh, unit, you know? And I think they're battle tested a little bit, you know? But we can't get our hopes up. We still have a lot of work to do, right? Um, hey, I, hey, I got my hopes up. I'm saying say it right your now. Hopes my, hopes up. Up. my hopes is up. They play, you know what I'm saying? I, I was waiting for a game like this and I'm glad they, you know, they came out and really showed you know, the not even like you said, not just the talent, but the way they want it, you know, the the you know, the attitude in which they, they played and and all the the energy and, you know, that urgency they play with. You know, I even liked when um, the ball came out of bounds and Greg ran and, and you know, <laughs> threw the ball back in almost to, you know, himself. Did he, did he almost get tackled right there? He almost, on the side? Yeah, he almost, got, almost got tackled as well. But, you know, like that, you know what I'm saying? I, I saw the urgency throughout the group, throughout the team, and not just on the people, not just the players on the field, but the bench, the coaching staff. And that's what you want, especially in Concap. That's you, you're going to need that. You know, if you get down, um, you, you're going to be down in games. At, at, uh, so it always depends on, you know, uh, how, you, like Gooch said, your character and how you come back in those type of matches. And they did that. And, you know, like I'm I'm ecstatic, man. I'm, I'm My hopes is up. So my hopes is, you know, it's high. Gooch, who impressed you? I would say that Weston stepped up as the leader of that team. Uh, I, w- I was thoroughly impressed with Weston. Um, how he just understood his fight never deteriorated 
in any part of that game. He was run. And I've always said, like, he needs to start from a lower position to get back and forth. And him playing next to Acosta there allowed him to have the game in front of him instead of playing with his back to the goal all the time. And, you know, for a player that's not six foot five, six foot four, he was winning everything on the offensive uh, headers. And I was like, wow, this guy's really taking this team on his shoulder and like telling them, come on, let's go. Even in the, even in the rumble, he was like, dude, let's go, let's go. Let's, let's do this. You know, you know, bees would have been in the corner just watching. Drinking yeah, water. Drink water. 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 Sipping his tea. Bees have been no. stretching. Talk, no, don't play me like that. Don't play me like that. <laughs> but, but also he kept his head. Yeah. And for a young player and for an intense game like that, it's not easy to do. But he was always there for his teammates, first to step up, first to protect. And, um, and he, he just did a hell of a job, man. Um, bees, who impressed you? Well, I mean, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to go before we get to that, because we talk a lot about, um, you know, players and how how good they've been and obviously and uh, they deserved it. You know, they play well, but I want to switch it. Who are you guys not impressed with? We always talk about, you know, different players and how we, you know, they could. They did. They <laughs> did taking the well. route. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we're going to be real. This All right. You crack, start right? off then. You start off then. So I, me and I always say, uh, obviously, um, uh, Mark made a couple of mistakes, but then as the game going on, get the game went on, he got better and better. But I think the guy that I think was just dropped his level uh, a bit was Acosta. Um, I thought, and I was in the game like towards the end. Yeah, he had, he made some some good tackles, and uh, he won a couple of good balls in the in the middle of the field. But like his his passing was off. Um, I thought the the level of the game uh, was a bit high for him in the beginning. And I just felt that, you know, he uh, he struggled in the, in the beginning. Um, and uh, I think it went unnoticed a little bit because of just the battle with USA, Mexico, the rivalry. And, and obviously, uh, Mark having that mistake to, to lead to the first goal. But I just thought his level was a bit uh, under um, under his level that he's usually, he's usually playing at. Mm-hmm. Mook? Oh, I go next? Yeah, yeah. I go next. Um, I have two. I have Tim Ream. I think that he's a player that we've seen already shouldn't is not uh, on a level of the international play. Uh, I think he's very slow. Um, I, I, I think he does not a, a, a good tackler and a good one v one defender. Um, he's not great in the air. I just don't see what he brings to the table besides age. And I, I'm sure Greg went with him off of experience. I want to say with Mark McKenzie, I think it was brilliant what he went through because again, I think he's. That those scars he needed to know what that pace is and that intensity is, he showed especially um, uh, the, the following game that he has the quality. His passing out of the back is better than what he showed against Mexico. But now he knows the speed. You will see him, um, uh, I think, flourish as a right right center back in the future. And I'm I'm happy and I'm proud of him. And I think defensively, no matter what he did, he always was. Um, you know, elite where you couldn't beat him one v one, you know, and gave a really, really strong presence in the back. I think we have to talk about Josh Sargent. You know, it's so important that we speak on our attacks and our striker because um, we struggle to score goals. And Josh Sargent, for me, who I think is a talented player, had a season where he didn't produce a lot of goals. And you guys know, scoring goals is about form. And I think you should be chosen on how, how you did during the season, how many goals you scored. And I think that, uh, as a nine. huh? As he is a nine. nine, you know, and unfortunately he plays with a team that was relegated, a team that doesn't get a lot of service. So he doesn't even, not even as comfortable as he should be on an international level in front of the net scoring with either foot. I mean, he had chances on his head. He had chances, um, turning his back to the goal and it just wasn't there. He, again, he has the quality. He's a good player. So I'll ask you this because I because I brought this up because a lot of people were talking about Josh Sargent and maybe he's not as clinical as people would want as a nine. And they brought up the same kind of debate that you're saying that he's not scoring enough goals. So especially in the Honduras game, right? He didn't get any goals. Everyone's like, oh, you know, I see about you came in or pay folk. He likes to be called. Came back in, scored the goal at the end. Um, if Gio had squared that ball that he missed wide and he touched, tapped it in and Josh has that one goal plus the save that he saved off the line. Would he have then been like, all right, he had a really good game. 
No, he had other chances besides that one ball that he that could have been squared to him. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not chance. saying he doesn't. But I'm saying yeah. if that ball had, if he had scored that, would your tone? Man, if, if if B's had here, he'd be a model. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it, it just doesn't. <laughs> it, it, it it you know like I, I hear what you're saying, Gooch. Right? Because like it's, it could be a smallest today, thing. It could be the smallest thing that that decides if you had a good game or or, or a bad 100%, 100%. game. Hundred percent. But as a nine in international, at least you need to just score one out of five chances you get. And he's, okay. he had, he had five chances. He had no goals. So you say Tim Ream, Josh Sargent. Who that's was it. the other one? I just that's spoke about it. Mark and how I, I think that oh, that's Mark. a good thing what happened to him. You know, I'm yeah. glad that we won. But I'm also glad that it happened to him. I think he's going to move forward yeah. stronger in the future. I mean, I've told him before, my first start for the national team, I got a red card, mm-hmm. right? And I thought my career was done, right? And, you know, feel upset because you know you can do better, but mm-hmm. understand that and then make yourself better after that. And I think that it was a great learning curve for him as well as the whole team, that that game and this tournament and the level of competition. Um, let's say for mine, my player that I thought didn't play as well as I wanted him to was Serginho. Mm. Um, and nobody thinks about that. And I think in the last friendlies, he had such an impact offensively and like he was all over the place. And I felt in these last two games, it was kind of not that he played terrible or anything like that, but he wasn't highlighted as he was, you know, and he played on the, the, uh, the right in the first game, then he switched to the left to hopefully he was more comfortable and I think that um, both teams did a good job at just, you know, neutralizing his threats. You know, he had a couple of good runs here and there, but I would have uh, expected him to contribute a lot more. Um, You're talking about Christian, right? No, I said Serginho. <laughs> I mean, Christian. Just, no, no, he threw, no, 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 no. No, no, look, look. At the end of the day, Christian is aware that he. Come I mean, on, he had, son. We have to talk about the, Christian. Christian, listen, at the end of the day, Christian had one of the fewest touches on the ball in the game, right? And that was. He, whether he couldn't find the ball, whether the team couldn't find him. At the end of the day, he didn't play to his level that we're used to, that we want him to. He's Captain America. We have all these expectations riding on him. But at the end of the day, when a player understands he hasn't been having the game, but then steps up to that moment. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I mean, for me, it's like, all right, you know, um, not to say that I, I... What moment? The penalty kick? Yes. Yeah, even 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 in the second half, I mean, obviously the, the game gets stretched in the second half, right? You know, teams get tired. You know, the the, the middle of the field is a little bit more open. So when the U.S. was finding Christian in those little pockets, you know, in the second half, right behind uh, the center the center midfield, and he could, he was able to run at uh, Mexico. He didn't defense. produce anything from those passes, though. Yeah, he did. I mean, they they it didn't come to nothing, but he got exactly. those, he, it. Didn't produce oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, passes. but he made but he made the pass, and then obviously they didn't. You know, it didn't amount to nothing. But I'm saying. He got in those little those little pockets, and that's where you want Christian to to be at. When the game opened up, yeah, he was a little bit more dangerous. And but for me, it's it's star power. He's a star, right? And you know, you look See, at that's that, and I'm, that's and I'm that, not. That, that's that. But yo, I mean, but but that's. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not comparing him to you know some of the best players in the world. But that's what they do sometimes. And, Ronaldo, and again, we, Ronaldo we, doesn't have we, the best no, game every single that, time. But never, he up and never. Comes up. But has Christian performed yet for U.S. national team as he's projected to be? Wait, in these last two games or in general? In general. I mean, yeah, man, there's games that he's held okay. his team on his back. Okay, okay. I mean, even if you go back to the qualifier and back in before 2018. Yeah, you know? I remember that 2018. I never saw one game. I remember the game, of course, Costa Rica we went to in, uh, in yeah, Red Bull Stadium. Was, you're talking yeah. about one game. I'm talking about the campaign. Yeah. yeah. Like okay. there, there, there were games that like. No, they didn't qualify in 2018, right? Thank you. So, are you, you talking about qual- yeah. are you talking about qualifying? You talking? No, about I'm talking about as a whole. I said I just don't remember yeah. a game. There's like, oh, Kristen balled out so much. You just said he did. Is, it, we just, what are you talking about? You just said he did. He doesn't know like, what he's talking about, Beast. What I just say? What I just say, Beast? You said when when Goose brought up the the qualifiers in 2018, like, oh yeah, 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 the game in uh, against Costa Rica. Yeah. No, I, I was no, saying that, that I was at the game in Costa Rica, and he didn't, and and we lost. He didn't show up. And and again, he, he, no, I didn't blame him for that, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Right, we get the I'm point. Waiting. You don't like Christian. We like Christian. We think I, like, Listen, I'm not here like, to hey, assume it. Say it. Yeah, Is but here's the problem it? though. Say it's it. not about like. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can I love y'all and I can criticize you about your game when you were playing. True. So so it's not a situation where I feel like I'm against Christian. Hell no. I want Christian to be the 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 the, the solid player and the incredible player that he has a God gift to be. But I'm just we have to we, we talk real here and in a, in a really really conversation. I haven't I don't know a game that I can recall that 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 was a real game, right? A game that means something. That Christian was just phenomenal. I was like, man, this kid 
And does he get a pass for when the you two say games? a real game? You mean not a friendly? Not a friendly. No, well then they ain't been playing. They ain't been many. You can't. He just went through the whole 2018 campaign, and granted, I mean, he had last they, year. Yeah, I mean the game when we played against. Um, I don't remember a game at Western McKinney didn't show up for the United States. That's I don't lie. remember a game. That's a lie. Weston Weston plays his game, but there's some. He's even said it on our podcast. There's some games that he just doesn't play well. You know what I mean? But, but he's a factor in that game. He's an impact player. Nobody's going to play perfect any game. We're not I'm judging. Okay. Per- I didn't say perfect. And, and Christian stepped up to, to score the to score the damn goal. The penalty. The okay. Goal. Do we give him Christian a pass because of his long? No, season? I didn't. You didn't let me finish. I said he doesn't give a pass because of his performance. But for me, I like the fact that he took he assumed that responsibility amidst knowing he wasn't playing his best game, and that's hard. To t- like Mexico wasn't able to do it right afterwards, right? They missed their penalty. The guy, uh, he wasn't able to uh, right to the occasion. Yeah. I so mean, you're giving Christian credit for making the penalty kick. 110%. Okay, Why wouldn't sorry. you? Okay. Yeah. I just want to make it clear. I'm just <laughs> ask a question, brother. I just want to make it clear. You're giving him the, cre- the credit for making the penalty kick. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> should, should we not? <laughs> no, I just wanted to know. Like you're saying. No, no, no. My question did, to you, you is. Did, if you didn't perform, makes but you. If but you made the penalty, penalty kick, and which is a very hard thing to do. Kick, do you not give home. them credit? Huh? If a player makes a penalty kick, do you not give them credit? Yeah. Yeah, he gets credit. <laughs> In a final? He gets credit. I'm just In saying overtime? that. Here's my, here's my thing about the U.S. national team, right? I want them these guys to earn it. That's all I'm saying. Like Gio Reyna, phenomenal player, bright future. But I think he'll be him as well as... Um, even Mark and well of the younger players who are under 24 years old, they need competition to get the best out of them. If Gio Reyna comes here and he thinks no matter how he plays, he's going to be able to start at 18 years old, it's not the best for his development. I don't think so because you seen, you saw what uh, uh, Aronson did. I love Aronson. in the second game. Yep. Oh, you know I do. Yeah, yep. that's my favorite. That's my favorite player. Yeah, but Aronson, so, but maybe hit, remember Aronson performed. Did he yeah. play a lot in Mexico? He came on. He knows yeah. he has to fight I politic see. and he has to fight. Yeah, but you're talking about, but you're saying that he needs competition when it comes to the national team. And I think he has that. So you know, that's a question that. though. So would you start Aronson over Gio over his performance? Right now? Next Maybe game. Was, Next game. It de- I mean, it depends. Uh, it depends on the... the what, what, the weather? No, nah, it depends on the format because they're both different players. They're both different players. You know? I thought they were fighting for the same position. That's why I mentioned that. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, Mookie likes to say stuff just for controversy. Um, yeah, and, 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 the, and, and a thought, right? We're here for a conversation. So the whole thing is, uh, you know. But to answer your question, right now. I see it, Gooch. I would still, I would still probably uh, start Gio. So I think, I think, G, I think Aronson would, would be better coming off the bench more than Gio would come off the bench. Look, you know, you know what I liked? And I don't know if he's a starter right now. He could be later on. Timothy Weah adds a different dynamic to the squad. Like, he's a different kind of player. He's always forward moving. He might not be as combination minded as Gio or the rest of them. But this man, like, he just wants to go at you. And I think if he can fine tune that, it'll be a a great threat for that team to have. Because I don't see too many other players like that in that mold. I could be wrong. That's like a, he's like a, a Eddie Johnson. He's like a young bees. Nah, nah, nah. He's like a young bees. <laughs> I agree with that. He do I think all, a better do, version, though. I didn't, I didn't do all. Shut up. He passes, him, all he passes that. himself the ball. He's like, I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the right mix? You know, what, what, who who blends and plays well together under Greg's... Uh, yeah, I, th- I think especially the front three. For me, we, we, we always said, you know, it's uh, Tyler, Weston, and for, for me, Musa. Um, I think in the top three, it's going to be, you know, who's really... What, what combination is the best not to say who's exactly. better who's not it's what mm-hmm. combination because you got christian you got gia you got timothy you got sergeant you got uh dk you got sabachu, sabachu. what's sabachu's got, new name now uh pfok that's his mother's maiden name how you say that again pfok pfok can we call him pfok not funk nah that's my name that's my that's my that's my name and you have to also, <laughs> also ask if uh jazzy yardis is in the mix he has well. to, yeah. I think, um, I think so. There, yeah. There's a there's a multitude of different combinations. Josie Altador. That I mean, if you want to put them in there, put them in there. I'm just saying, like they got a fun. A coach once told me it's not my job to put the best player on the team. It's my job to put the best team on the field. Right. And if it's not the best players that make the best combination, then you gotta go with it. And I and I think I think just with 
what we've seen from Greg Bohalter and not even just these last two games because they're recent, but in, in the game, other games, um, he, he changes things around. You know, yeah. there's some things that stay, you know, kind of concrete and he likes, you know, how, how um, some formations are. But, you know, there's a lot of a lot of competition and a lot of movement going on, especially in the midfield or oh, the midfield and forward positions. So, you know, one day it can be Jordan, depending on the, the defense. One, can, one day it can be um, uh, Sergeant and then the midfields can always change. You know, you got Musa fight for a shot. Where are you going to put Christian? Is he better out wide? He better as a second striker, you know, and, and whatever, you know, is he – it depends. So I think all those things change with, and he has that flexibility. And I think that's good for the national team because they can, they can depend more on how they play and worry about them more so than an opponent. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, we all been to good, you know, you've been to teams where you always change your formation and always change, you know, your number 10 or your, 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 your seven or your six on how they play. Mm-hmm. I think now, you know, we have the luxury of the players that we have in our squad with the uh, flexibility of how they move up top that we can unbalance things and we can worry about ourselves more than having to always worry about the defense and what they're going to do. Okay. They're going to play this way. Then we can do this. How are they going to play? Then we can do that. I think it's a, it's good to add that like Mexico switched up their formation without really switching up their players. Like they were able to, their, their players are capable of playing in different formations. I don't know if we have the players that can just on a whim switch to a three back for a four back and like not change the characters in there yet. Right. So I think for Greg and the staff, it, it's, it's finding the right players that want to play the system that you want to do, but also finding the right system that better suits the the, the quality of your players. So it's, and they have only, you know, a couple months to, to figure this out. So let's see. Do you guys have an idea what Greg's system is now off of these last games that we had 2021? Do you have a better understanding of what his system is? What's his style of play? Nope. <laughs> I want to introduce to you the crack crew Somebody who has a stellar career. I mean, started out with U.S. 17 national team. Um, Hello. Hold on. I ain't ready for you yet, Clint. You started out with U.S. 17 <laughs> national team. Was Gatorade Soccer Player of the Year. Two-time yeah. All-American. Drafted by the L.A. Galaxy. Did 11 years in the MLS. Scored over 67 goals. Was the 2002 World Cup. Uh, first goal to score in the World Cup 2002. Had five goals in one game. But at the end of the day, I saw him run New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause for the best Clint, Mr. Clint Mathis. The man, the myth, the legend. You've been, you've been under the radar for about 10 years now. Yeah, which is a good thing. Great thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Clint? How you doing, man? It's Beast. Yeah, nah, doing great, brother. How you doing? Good, man. Good. Good to hear your voice, bro. Hey, hey Clint, yeah. man, we, we were told by your publicist we couldn't show your face because we didn't pay enough money. So, yeah, um, thank the, you. Well, that, yeah, well that, that's the first reason. The, the second reason is nobody wants to see it. <laughs> well, well, Clint, this is where, where you calling from, a long man? time, brother. Good to hear your voice. Yeah, no, nah, good hearing from all you guys, man. I'm excited. Where you call? Where, Bees want to know where you're calling from. Uh, I'm calling uh, in lovely Southern California. I, I live in uh, San Clemente now. Nice. So uh, just uh, got some work stuff I'm got to head up to doing. That's why we can't see my beautiful face because I'm driving. So getting ready to, to go to this meeting uh, here in a little bit. So just want to make sure I got to at least uh, take the time and hang out and chat with you guys. It's been a long time. Hey, Clint, before um, hearing our beautiful voices, what were, what, were you, what were you listening in the car when you have a long drive? What are you playing? Uh, well, right now, I mean, it's probably not going to be in the forte like it used to be uh, in the day uh, because my kids don't really need to listen to that kind of music. So it's actually a little country. I brought my, brought my grassroots back out, my redneck style side. So I'm <laughs> country music. Man, you went from P. Diddy to country style. I love it, man. I love it. Man. <laughs> exactly. Well, half the uh, half the country songs now are rap songs anyway. So. It's funny you say that. Um, there's a new rapper, um, a country rapper who's coming out, and he's. Uh, I'll make sure I send you his album, man. I'm working with him, so I'll make sure I send his album. But, but Clint, I just want to get started off. I mean, you had a, a obviously one of the best careers, and you're one of the most phenomenal and most electrifying footballers to come through the U.S. Soccer Federation. But am I clear that you're not on in the Hall of Fame? Uh, that is correct. I am not. How the how do you feel about that? I mean, 
the way I've always looked at it is, yeah, accolades are great. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I didn't always do the right things and go down the straight and narrow path throughout my whole career. But the one thing that, you know, was most important to me with my peers, uh, if I had respect from them in the locker room, you know, on, off the field afterwards, whether we're going out to dinner or going to a nightclub, you know, that, that's what I cared about is the camaraderie. But, Definitely. you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say, hey, it would be nice uh, yeah, right. to, to be in that. But I, I, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it uh, because I know what, you know, my peers think of me. And, that's you know, it. being able to be on a, on a podcast like this with you guys and just <laughs> hearing from you, that means enough to me. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, you, you, you in oh, our man. Hall of Fame. Just just that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Clint, me, that's, uh, that's more important <laughs> hey Clint um, let me ask you a question so do you think you got more respect after you retired you know what I'm saying because when you when you were just speaking you said you know you didn't always do things on the straight and narrow so do you think that people appreciate that more after you left the game the more so when you were actually playing um, I, I think for, for those people that you know kind of look back and go hey you know what yeah, people thought that, yeah, I did well and I played well, but, you know, it might have been overshadowed some by, you know, the off the field festivities or, or whatnot. But, you know, that's what that's what made me who I was. You know, mm-hmm. I, I didn't right. I didn't really put the pressure on myself. I mean, you can even talk to bees when we're in the World Cup in South Korea. You know, I show up late on a game day because I was given the wrong time, but walk in with a mohawk and Bruce is <laughs> ready to kill me. But, <laughs> I, 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 but but at the end of the day, you know, yeah, that's a huge day's her own, but I never let it bother me or get me worried or anything. I was always the one that's trying to make jokes and be like, hey, guys, this is just another day in the life, dude. Let's just go out and have fun and let's don't stress out. Let's don't, you know, panic or anything like that. And, you know, you that's think, the way I, I live my life. You think it's safe to say that you were like the first to be unapologetically you in that program, right? Like you were who I you mean, were. I would, I would say so. Yeah, I would yeah, say so. I used to yeah, always get the, yeah, I, I used to always get the, you know, I, I was the, the, the blunt of the, if things didn't go right, I was the easy scapegoat, put it that way. Mm-hmm. And, and I was okay with that. But, you know, some people can't handle it, couldn't handle the pressure, or they would put their head down and, you know, it would just mess their whole game up or mind up. I just said, all right, you can blame me as much as you want. Let's just go out and play and leave me alone for right now kind of thing. And, uh, you know, so many people like, uh, I don't know if you guys remember Billy Walsh that used to play the Metro stars and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, he goes, these guys were so dumb that they didn't take advantage of you. He goes, you were like the Dennis Rodman of soccer. Yep. <laughs> he goes, why? I mean, you think about like, nowadays, yeah, you can't do, you know, half the crap that we did back in the day without cell phones, but you know, if you were to do something like that and, you know, you work it into nowadays or whatever with the, the way that the media and marketing and everything else, and, you know, they the MLS could have done that, you know, back in the day with, with m- myself and, you know, just trying to get soccer out there because, you know, back when we started then, I mean, nobody gave a shit about soccer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I remember, I was going to say it still, I remember uh, in, in O2 World Cup, the game, uh, you know, the first game before the, per- the Portugal game. And I remember us doing a shadow, you know, the starting team against the, the team that we were uh, starting. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I remember, I remember, you know, you know, as coaches do, they say, okay, you got to kind of play like Rui Costa. You got to play like Figo. You have to play like Conce Child, whatever. So Clint being Clint, and obviously he was upset that he wasn't starting. But Clint being Clint, the, every time he got the ball, hey, who are you? Were you were you Figo? You were Figo, right? <laughs> like, I, I think Figo, so. But, yo, but he was yelling the whole time on the, on the, on the <laughs> Yo, Figo got the ball. Figo, go take down, go, go. Oh uh, yeah. Yo, that's yeah, so no, hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, I mean, so we get ready for a game, yeah, I mean, and we laughing throughout the whole pitch, laughing on the whole on yeah. field, just because Clint called himself Figo yeah. throughout the whole training. It yeah, <laughs> and, and, and I think and I think we beat the starters like three three zero in like fifteen <laughs> yeah, yeah. minutes. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I remember that. That was funny. Yeah, no, I was I was an asshole, but hey, I had to I had to release release somehow. So, so, so Clint, now n- now older, a father. Uh, I would I would assume different than you were as a as a player. Is there anything that you regret doing, or is there anything you would have perhaps done differently? in being your own mm-hmm. personality? Yeah. I mean, if I wanted to be a, a smarter businessman, uh, I would never say regret anything. 
because uh, I never really did anything to, you know, to really to hurt anybody or, mm-hmm. or anything like that. So right. I wouldn't use the word regret, but right. change some, some decisions, of course. I mean, but that, that's called a crystal ball. And, uh, yeah. you know, if we had that crystal ball back then, yeah, of course, you're going to make make different decisions and things of that sort. But the way I, I think about life is I mean, you, you got to just go and live it. And, th- and that's how you learn if you're making right decisions or bad decisions is, you know, you, you got to live through life. You can tell people that, hey, this is the way to do it. This is the wrong way to do it. But nobody's ever going to learn until they go live it and find out for themselves. Yeah, it makes you wiser, man. But I look at these players now and I see how they're on their Instagram and they posting yeah. with this, posting with that. And I'm looking at them like they don't realize that Clint Mathis before social media was the king of New York City. <laughs> the things that you I've, I've never experienced seeing a professional footballer in America live a life like an NBA player Yo, <laughs> well, well a lot of times they were right there next to me exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you needed to get somewhere I can call Clint I know yeah, I get in the club I know the restaurant would give me some seating I mean I joked with these guys before you came on and it seems like a small thing now but back then I was mesmerized you had a sprint deal and you had a free sprint phone. I was like, man, he can make long distance phone calls anytime he wants. <laughs> uh, people always say, hey, what do you what do you think? Is, is soccer like a God-given child? Is it a work ethic type of thing? And I go with both. Yeah. I was like, but as good as you think that God gave me talent to play soccer, that's not his best attribute that he gave me. And, uh, you know, God gave me the ability to, to be a people person. Definitely. And, you know. I can, I can go hang out with the boys in the club listen, listen to rap music or I can go down the street with my cut off jeans, wife beater and hang out with my rednecks drinking PBR. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, so, and so I'm a people person, man. I, lo- I love good people uh, and uh, you know, we need more, more good people in this world right now with all the crap that's going on. But preach. Yeah. I mean, it, that's how I tried to just continue to, to live my life. And I wanted people to have fun. I mean, I won't forget the time Beasley, you know, Chicago comes in town, we're playing. Yeah, we got to try to kill each other on the field. But, you know, after after the game, he's already set up for his birthday party up in the booth. <laughs> yes, sir. Popping <laughs> bottles with models. Yes, sir. That sounds like Beasley. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, 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 Clint, that, that brings us to a situation. Bees has told a story in this podcast, and I think that he um, misread and said your name and put you in this story. And I think he's trying to, um, hurt your, your reputation. You know, nah, I love nah, these nah, 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 nah. He know, he know, I, he'll, he'll know what I'm talking about. So we had, remember Clint, we had the qualifier. Uh, I don't think he was a part of the squad, but it was me and Corey. We, we no, I was, I was, yeah, I was, I was injured. Yeah, you were injured. Yeah, I was injured. Exactly. You were injured. So you're like, yo, we going, I'm going to this club. I'm going to the spot, blah, blah, blah. Y'all come with me. And we like, all right, bet. You know, so me and me and Corey went to the, Went to the spot with you, and that's and that's the night that I saw Lino DiCaprio in the club, in the the lounge or wherever we went to. I I never forget uh-huh. that he had a he had a um, like a, a dad hat on, kind of you know pushed down a little bit, sitting and, with it with a chair. and twenty women. And then, right. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and the thing is, push, and the thing I, I was gonna say, and the thing is, nowadays those same girls around them are still the same age. <laughs> 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 but yeah, you remember that. You remember that story. So then, uh, after that, obviously the time we we're supposed to be going to, I think it was, I want to say Grenada or something like that for a qualifying match. But then the time <laughs> that we were supposed to be well, leaving the, the hotel changed and it went to earlier than later. And then Clint, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, me and Corey got to the air. We went straight to the airport. Pam tried to save our ass, but it didn't work. And Bruce had, you know, came and talked. Yeah. He was like, "Yo, uh, this ain't what it is. I'm, I'm letting y'all go." And then obviously the 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 elder statesman, stel, uh, statesman like Claudio and and I think Eddie and Ernie was like, "Nah, we need them. They have to play. They get just gotta, you know, take a fine and give it to a charity." So that's what we did. But that was my my, my right. that's my one of my famous nights with Clint. And then I, I yeah. beat you know Leno DiCaprio. <laughs> oh no. I- and just to go back from earlier, what we said, I got in trouble for that night too. <laughs> <laughs> By who? You oh, were yeah, in the squad. Who, 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 how'd you oh, get in trouble? God, don't, don't worry. I got phone calls uh, up to me. Like, what are you doing taking these boys out? Yeah. Wow. Bruce, Bruce would call me every once in a while. Damn, damn. That was just a normal Tuesday night for Clint, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Well, if, I was, if, I, if I was injured, man, I had nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what was your relations like with Bruce Arena? Yeah, it was a great relationship, man. I mean, a lot of people thought that it was bad, but it was like that, that love-hate relationship. Yeah. I, I was the guy that was the, you know, the the son that, 
you know, he wanted to have, but he had to say, Hey, I need to reprimand this guy. And yeah. then, you know, you have to have a downfall and, and I'm okay with that. But, uh, one thing I do respect from Bruce, um, and, and a lot of people don't know this, um, so keep it quiet. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> is when I, uh, he brought me back um, when I was leaving Colorado to uh, Red Bulls when he was coaching there. And then after that season, you know, he got pushed out. And he uh, went in. Uh, once I found out, I went to his office. I was like, hey, Bruce, you know, I'm sorry to hear this or whatever. This is bullshit, whatever kind of thing. I don't agree with it, but I just want to come and tell you, you know, in case you leave before I got to see you. And he goes, hey, Clint, you know what? He goes, you're the only person that's walked in this office and told that to me. Wow. And he goes, and I, and I know whatever relationship that we had and what people think. He goes, I've always, always respected what you've done. Mm. And now I realize more than ever through all those times that you were always there to try to do the right thing for everybody. Definitely. And I see that now. Definitely. And that's all, that's all I needed. I love it, man. Yeah. Respect. That, that goes about the stuff that you said behind the scenes. Like you don't care about the awards and that you're respected by your peers. You're respected by your former coaches. And at the end of the day, when all, all said and done, that's the only recognition that we all need. Right. Right. I mean, I can't take any of this shit to, to bed with me when I die. So, as long as I know I can feel this when I'm getting, you know, praises from you guys, from people like Bruce, the ones that everybody else always respects, I only care about those kind of people respecting me. And and that's, that's all I can do in life. I don't need any awards or money or whatever. Yeah, all that stuff's great, but you can't take that with you. True. Hey, you, 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 sorry, I, I, this is one I need to know about, but you talk about respect and... Listen, man, for me, when I was watching you before I got on the national team, O2 World Cup and everything, and then you went, made your move to Germany, you know, talking about respect, I want to know what happened, what went down, what went wrong while you were in Germany. And don't sugarcoat it. So, no, no. So you mean what happened with the deal with Bayern Munich or once I was in Germany and why I came back? Well, I'll take all of the above, man. <laughs> 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 well, well, let's start with let's start with Germany because that's the only reason I ended up at Hanover. And so, when uh, Bayern Munich they ended up winning Champions League uh, that year, and then they were coming through New York, and we were this is when it was back with the Metro Stars at Old Giant Stadium, and we were playing a game, playing a scrimmage game uh, uh, against the team or whatnot. And so, yeah, I know that it's not going to be their, their best game. It's, you know, they just came off Champions League, but I was like, hey, this is my time to go out there do what I love doing and try to put it on them and you never know what would happen. So I go in that game, whatever, played really well. It's one of my better games I've played in a while, actually. Um, and we ended up winning 2 nothing. I think I scored one goal, chipped the keeper, ended up going to dinner or whatever. People started talking, ended up getting a phone call a little bit later and my agent's calling, my German agent, my American agent, and they go, hey, Munich wants to fly you out to come see the facilities they're interested in you coming to Munich. I said, okay. So we had a weekend <laughs> okay, off. you know, casual. Yeah. I said, all right, when are we doing this? And I was like, all right. So I don't have to tell anybody. I was like, we have the weekend off. We had no games. They gave us whatever, the three days off. So flew to Munich for the weekend. Went and sat with Uli. Uh, Carl, uh, Carl Hans Rumenega ended up going through. Came to an agreement on numbers. Had a dinner. Had beer. Signed the contract done deal wow uh, well back then back then it was hey you had to worry about you know the league of proving everything it's a lot different than it is now obviously and so ended up having a deal at that point i just signed i guess i think i had a year and a half left on my contract and so i mean you think about numbers now back then when i my second year i signed a four-year deal first year was 100 grand Okay. And then we go, and then it would go, I think 20 grand for the next, you know, three years as a base. Well, also put my contract that, Hey, if I reach all these bonuses, it automatically rolls into my salary. So I hit every, that, that was that year that I scored the five goals in the game and did all that stuff. Well, I maxed out all my bonuses. So my salary now was more than my fourth year salary. And so, but the reason I put that into perspective is because Tim Howard, he just signed a five-year deal, okay? Mm -hmm. This is right before he went to Man, Man U. Remember, remember those days? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, yeah, so Tim had five years on his contract, maybe four and a half. I had a year and a half. So 
So flew to Munich, blah, 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 come through. Now there's discussions with the league. And by the way, my first year, I think I would have made 1.8 million. But no, I was I was making I was making 170 grand. All right. <laughs> yeah. And they flat out told me they said, "Hey, if you play more games than our, our guy last year, the least amount of played, the, uh, the play on the team with the least amount of games was 19, 19 wow. games." Yeah. And they go, if, "If you play more games than that, we'll rip this contract up and give you a brand new one." <laughs> wow. I said, I said, "Okay." I said, "Okay, no problem." Right. So now the league gets in, the league gets involved with a. You know, and they go, hey, he's never played in Europe. You know what? We'll give you this amount. The league's like, no, we'll take six million. Well, at that time, you know, we hadn't heard of any transfer fees going like this. Right. And so, so they said, no, we're not going to give you six. Uh, not going to give you six million. What we'll do is we'll give you. I think it was almost structured just like Tim Howard's was. But it ended up being like four and a half million or something. Mm. Four million, four and a half million. League said no. Mm. We'll go ahead and we'll take Clint. So they came back to me. Said, hey, we'll give you a new contract. We'll give you a million dollars a year to stay in the league. Go through. I'm not trying to be long winded on this story, but you wanted everything. No, please be long winded. Yeah, yeah, go long winded. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, So then the league offers me, and we're getting it to it. So it's all right. Well, if you want to keep me here and you want to do this marketing stuff you're talking about, it's got to be a million dollars a year then. So, like, all right, yeah, I think we can get that. I'm going to get Pepsi to pay it. Well, back then it wasn't supposed to happen like that, but. You can get anything done, I guess, in this world if you, you want it bad enough. Mm-hmm. So we go down to the uh, one of the last few games. We were playing DC United. Somebody came and slid tackle me, and I stepped on the guy's back, red card out, missed the game. All we needed was to tie or win one more game to make the playoffs. Well, we go through, didn't end up making the playoffs, and the, the coach and the GM at that time blamed the season on me. And the league took the million dollar contract away from me. What? Before I wow. could sign up. The, the league took it away from you? Yeah, yeah, they said the we league. no longer offer yeah. this contract. Yeah, the league on everything. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't New yeah. York that was like we don't want to give it to you anymore. Well, well, those two said that I was the reason that uh, we didn't make the make the team. Wow. See, New York yeah. really didn't want to pay uh, that money. Wow. They, you know, Goose, was, Goose, they, the league, the league signed out a contract. Bro. Yeah, yeah, no, but like sometimes yeah. the maybe the club tells the league, listen, don't do it anymore. You know, versus yeah, this was before, before that time. Yeah, oh, the wow. league could have put me on any team. That, yeah, the league could have put me on any team they wanted to at that point. Yeah. So yeah. at that point, so anyway, let, let me understand the chronologically. At that point, you had already passed on the Bayern because New York had said they're going to match I, it. I, I didn't pass on the Bayern. I, I had no say so. I wanted to go to Munich. Right. But it had to, they had to agree on they had to agree on a transfer fee mm-hmm. because I had no rights then. And so it, it wasn't up to me. The league said, well, you know what? We're not signing it. And so they got twofold. So they kept me for another year and a half. I said, well, I'm not re-signing. I don't care what you offer me. And then that's how I ended up going to Germany. So went and tried out with a couple teams. Um, almost signed with Mick McCarthy at, um, what you call it, Sunderland. Mm-hmm. But he he had to wait. And then uh, he was waiting on uh, a board meeting on Monday. I was like, well, I can't wait, Mick. I got to leave Friday. And it's so funny. I found out he said that was one of the worst mistakes he's ever made in his coaching career mm-hmm. by letting uh-huh. me by letting me leave Sunderland. So then I signed at Hanover and okay, Sarah, Sarah. So everything was good. Ralph Rognick there got along well. Then we brought in uh, Evald Lehnen, who uh, is very harsh. I mean, Germans are you know blunt and to the point, which is great. Uh, Germans kind of don't even like him, <laughs> <laughs> and so. He brought in some of his players, and Beza know this story too because I believe he was at the game. Um, I ended up, uh, we were playing in Soldier Field. We were playing Poland. Came in for a game, and during training, I ended up tweaking like my Achilles going to do a volley. And so I was rehabbing, rehabbing, and I didn't start the game. I came in second half. That's when we uh, whipped the ball in. I crossed it into Boca Negra for the header win in Chicago, yeah. game over. So then we go to preseason, and we're running in the forest. I step on a rock and bust my ankle open. And from then on out, he would never start me, never do any of this stuff. That was what, Well, I take that back. He did. He put me in the end. That's where the whole watch, when yeah. I point at my watch, yeah. and I grab, <laughs> grab myself. So that was that issue. But I was looking to go to some other teams. He was going to get fired. And the president even told me, hey, Clint, just relax. If we don't win today, the coach is getting fired. Well, that goal that I scored off that volley actually saved his job. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and, oh, and so I went, went went through that, and then I was looking to go to some other uh, three other German teams. But then I get a phone call from John Ellinger, 
and John Ellinger goes, Hey, Clint, I just wanted to call you. He goes, remember back when, uh, we went to the world university games. This is right when we were out of college. And, uh, he goes, you told me that if I ever got a professional coaching job, you would drop everything, you, what you have oh, and you'd come play, <laughs> and you'd come play for me. <laughs> and I said, and I said, yeah, John, I told you that. I'm a man of my word. I was like, where are you at? He goes, well, we're starting the team, Salt Lake City, RSL. He goes, I'm going to be the head coaching job. I said, all right, I'll get out of my contract. So got out of my contract with Hanover. We parted ways happily. And that's how I ended back. Cause and, and, and I, I said, I, cup. Yep. yep. So that I said, I was, I'm a, I'd rather keep my word than, you know, screw somebody, lie to them. And then it wasn't the right business decision by any means. If I would have known now or then what I know now, I could have been like, Hey John, I'm not going to play for you, but I'll write you a, a you know, a hundred thousand dollar check. If you, if you call it even. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, uh, Clint, one of the reasons why we do these shows is to kind of, uh, bridge the gap, right. Of the generations and mm -hmm. you, know, you giving this story, uh, you know, it's, it's so, so important. So, so much value, right. To the next up and coming U S national team player who might go through these, who will go through these, same type of scenarios. Um, what's your thought process on the recent core and the recent games of the U.S. national team and these young young ballers that they have playing in Europe? No, I've been happy, uh, to be honest with you. I've been very happy to see that, um, you know, no disrespect to MLS. I, I love this league. That's what, you know, made my whole career. And, you know, tell them where we would be if it wasn't for this league. Um, but it's still got, uh, you know, a ways to go. Um, our national team kids got a ways to go, but to see the age that they're at, it reminds me of the Beasleys and the Landons that, you know, in, in the U S kids that were 18, 19 years old had no business playing on the world stage coming from this country and even the, the rest of the world, if you look at it, but that has changed so much. I mean, if you're, you know, just now getting on the national team and you're 26 years old, dude, you're, you're yeah, over, right. you're, you're way yeah. too old. Way too yeah. old. Way too old. It's, it's you're way for you. If you haven't made it by 24. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so uh, it, it's good to see that we got guys that it's not just guys that are, you know, the older guys that have been playing for years and years and years and we're having to hold on to them. You have these young guys that are playing at Barcelona, playing at Juventus, and not just on the team. I mean, these guys are starting and making huge impact for these clubs. And uh, it's great to finally see that we, we have that. And, you know, the team was struggling for, you know, I would say the last year and a half or so, um, you know, before COVID or whatever. Still wasn't getting the results and things of that sort, but to be able to watch this, you know, the, the Nations League and, and what they did and how resilient they were because, you know, once Mexico scored that second goal, everybody is going, oh, shit, here we go again. Mm -hmm. Just giving it away or whatever. But these guys were resilient. They fought back hard. And they're fucking good soccer players. Mm -hmm. And, and, that's, and that's, that's one thing that we, we never got respect for, I don't think, until like the 2002 World Cup. You know, they would be like, yeah, these Americans, they're unbelievable athletes. You know, they're going to be able to stick around in games because they hit, they're big, strong, they can run fast. Well, I think we, you know, really kind of changed that attitude in 02 and said, well, these guys actually played soccer too. And, and I think that, you know, we've had some, you know, ups and downs, not making the World Cup, you know, the last go round. And I think Greg has done a great job with these younger kids and, you know, just to, to be able to have that good group of core young kids. Um, hopefully we can continue to keep it going. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we, we were speaking about this before you came on, like, it's crazy to, to know what the average age of the team is, right? Because like you said, back in the day, you only got like a handful of the youngsters, you know, it was Bees and Landon and Bobby were the first batch. And then, you know, I didn't come in for years later, but we were the minority in that group of experienced players, you being one of them. And then now it's kind of like flipped where the, the experienced no, player sure. is definitely the minority in the group. Um, and right. like the younger vibrant players are definitely overwhelmingly majority. So it's a turn of a time. I think you, you don't just see it in the, the U S squad. You know, you, you saw it years ago at the Belgium squad, you saw it in the English squad, you know, they're saying that they're going to be a, a lot of promise. So I think it's the, uh, the transition of sport really. No, for sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. Right. I mean, I think I was 26 when I played that world cup and I was just getting into my prime. But yeah, that, and that just shows the difference. I want to say something, though. In 2002 World Cup team, you know, a lot of people think that United States national team players are just starting now to play in Europe. And you guys had 
you know, players playing for, you know, Brad Friedel was on Blackburn at that time. Um, Frankie Haydick was on Bayern Leverkusen. Greg Berhalter was on Crystal Palace. John O'Brien is on Ajax. Uh, David Regis was on Mets. Um, Eddie Lewis was on Fulham. I mean, Ernie Stewart yeah. playing in Holland. Uh, Joe Max Marr, Everton. I mean, Cody <laughs> Rainier, Sutherland. I mean, you know, uh, you know, bees were just about to go overseas. You know, you had Tony Santa playing at, at Nuremberg. I mean, uh, Casey Keller was at Tottenham. We had players playing in Europe, and a lot of times people forget about that, right? And forget about uh -huh. they think the U.S. history just started now. You know, and so I just wanted to put that in there so people realize do your due diligence. Like, well, that's what well, that's. I think that's one thing with, and I've said this before in past interviews with, uh, with U.S. soccer. They don't promote they don't promote the history of 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 U.S. soccer. And I'm talking about before us, before 2002. I'm talking about the 80s, the 90s. They don't, yeah. you know, and that's and that's one nope. thing that I think that U.S. soccer can be better at is that, you know, tell these young kids how we how they got to where they are now, you know, and I'm talking about not even the players because not even the players don't even know, yeah. you know, but I'm talking about more so even the fans, the young fans that are coming up. Like we have history in this country, mm -hmm. you know, we have players that have, you know, played in World Cups. I'm talking about, you know, from the 70s, 80s, all throughout, you know what I'm saying? We never missed a World Cup until recently yeah yeah i mean you know what i'm saying and we we don't know nothing about well i mean i do but we don't know as a as a country we don't know a lot about those players and those eras because we don't celebrate our history and i think that's one thing that u.s soccer can do better at celebrate our history in u.s soccer for sure but but clint before we let you go um tell us about you being on the cover of uh sports illustrated and at that time he took my spot like, huh he took my spot <laughs> How was the attention <laughs> from from people? Hey. Yeah. Uh, it was, well, as B said, he took his spot. Actually, I let you on the ESPN magazine with me. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm just fucking around. Uh, it's so funny. I got a little story about that one, too, um, uh, which is pretty crazy at the time how, like, I think that – and like I said, this, this ain't about me, but I think just some of the actions that I did and showed that, hey, this guy is a, a human being just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he has a very good talent. And the reason I say that and preface it is because, one, you know, we we're very fortunate to get to do that ESPN shoot with Bees and Landon and then did this shoot and was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And I know Ernie was on it. You know, a handful of soccer guys have done it before. But the cool story uh, about this is, they sat there and told me that, hey, you know what, this is a preview going into the World Cup, blah, blah, blah. And then I think it was when I think I was in Korea. I got a phone call and they were telling me, hey, Clint, this has never happened before. But back to back issues, uh, we're, we're talking about putting you on the cover again. Wow. Wow. And, and so it was it was going to be back to back on the cover. And then just like these uh, alerted to earlier, I didn't start that first game. And that's why I wasn't on that second cover. This is from what I was told. And, wow. then, they, and, they, and then they put Landon on the, that next cover. <laughs> <laughs> you, so we you had lucky, we had, you, lucky yeah. you didn't get chosen to do that shoot where Bees was. Uh, what, 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 he did. He was in there. Oh, was he wait, in wait, wait, wait. He yeah. was in there. Oh, was he in the Yeah. I got to see that. One of the worst ones. We, we popping up that oh, picture no, no. right now as we speak, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring Bring it. It. You were one of the worst ones. Bring it. My, mine was shit. No chance. No, <laughs> I, said, no, I, I didn't say them. yours was bad. I said no, one of well, them. I I said, I... Well, I can name three that were worse than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Landon, Pablo. Brian, 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 Pablo yeah. and Brian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I agree. I agree. Yeah, Those three. And then, and, then, and, then, and then I think I went into the other one. Casey was in like a pair of U.S. soccer shorts. He wasn't yeah. even putting on clothes. I need, I need to know <laughs> how they even convinced y'all to do that like no, that. who produced that yeah i hope he was fired uh, after yeah. that he or she yeah yeah i have no idea i wasn't yeah, paying I attention either. i was just like let's let's just get this done so i can get get home <laughs> <Word. No. laughs> hey um transitioning into coaching did you enjoy it or you realize that you were over it and uh it's time to switch it up no, I, I did enjoy it. I, I love being out there. It, it was different. I'm not going to lie. I mean, we, we've already talked about how the generations are, are definitely different of, of how we had to do things. And, you know, it's a funny story when you were sitting there talking about, you know, people on Instagram, this and that. I'm sitting here in a locker room and I see two of my players just sitting in the locker room and they both start laughing at the same time. And one of them was Harry Schiff. It was pretty funny. And uh, 
I was like, Hey, you guys laughing. I was like, please tell me you're not, uh, texting your teammate right here. Are you? And I was literally making a joke out of it. Yeah. And he just like look, looked at me and got quiet. I was like, give me that phone. I was like, did you, are you really texting him? He's 10 feet in front of you. Why don't you talk to him? <laughs> but they were, they were literally texting each other and it was, they were the only two in the locker room and they wow. were texting each other. So I had to get used to some stuff like that. Uh, I did love it. Um, unfortunately, you know, Frank got let go and then they let the rest of the staff go. And I was looking at, you know, uh, get some other positions. And then one day I was here in California sitting on the beach, just reminiscing. And I go, you know what? I was like, I did this my whole life. I was mm. like, it ain't about me anymore. Mm. I got four kids. Why don't I get my weekends back? And let me just go be a normal nine to fiver, find something I like doing and keep me busy and God just go you. that route. But that way I know that, Hey, I, I get to spend time with these kids cause it's about raising them. And like I said, I did this my whole. You there? And then, oh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, you broke out for a little bit. No, yeah, God, I thought about that. God, God bless you, man. I'm glad you found peace and you switched it up, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, grant, granted, do I miss it? Yeah, I mean, it, it'd be nice to be out there on the field and half the time I'm like, what are they doing? But, you know, <laughs> that, 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 that's being a spectator, right? They, yes. You don't even have to know anything about soccer and you're still going to say that. Definitely, definitely. Sidebar, Bees has a club that he's, you know, he that might might open up doors for you later on. So, <laughs> he, he owns a club now. Uh, yeah. hey, hey, when you want to come out of retirement, man, let me know. Let me know. I know. I know good and well they ain't letting Brother B open up no joint in Fort Wayne. <laughs> I already got it, man. We, hey, we, we soccer club, rolling. soccer club. He's thinking yeah. nightclub. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, like, yeah. You're already, so yeah, you're already thinking in the, the, the head of the gun. Yeah. He's thinking but, South uh, Beach. Last, <laughs> last, last quick question, and this could be. It's on, and I want this to be off the cusp. Favorite teammate you ever played with? Ooh, I'd have to give that probably to Pablo. Mastriani. Oh, wow. Why is that? I, would, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have anticipated that one, but go ahead. Why? Uh, because that man did so much legwork for me yeah. and <laughs> won the ball. Cause I was going to either say him or Chris Armas on the national team. Cause both mm. those guys killed themselves for me. And it was, I mean, Pablo was good with his feet. Chris was good with his feet. Mm -hmm. But when we were, when we were on fire, they go, Clint, I'll win the ball. You just get open and let me give it to you. Nice. And, and like I said, those guys literally, killed themselves for me and uh, you know hopefully i served them justice by doing what i did but uh yeah off the cuff he, he was my my roommate on the national team you know we got very close you know he had a bunch of dumb stuff together which was even better <laughs> and uh yeah he, he, he was all around good good teammate to me uh so off the cuff i'd have to go with him how good was john o'brien ah he was sick <laughs> I, I, to this day, I, I, it's so funny. Like I go back and I was real close with Tab Ramos. And so Tab was always the one that I thought like one-on-one -on -one was the best U.S. soccer player. I mean, I got to play with him day in and day out. And, you know, I know he got injured a lot towards the end and stuff, but he was the best one-on-one -on -one player I've ever seen. And so uh, he, he was amazing. But then when I got to the point where I got to play with John, and I was like, dude, this guy's been at Ajax, and uh, he had the most unbelievable feet. It was like he was just gliding, wasn't even trying. It's like it's like watching Usain Bolt go down to the hundred meters. It's like he's not; it doesn't even care. He yeah. doesn't even seem like seem like he's even there. And uh, John was so sick in practice. I've made him. I've seen him make so many people just look silly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> uh, he was he was sick. So if I had to guess right now, I mean, we'll see what you know Pulisic and some of these other kids got going. But if I had to to say, hey, who's the best U.S. soccer player of all time? I would have to say John O'Brien. That's what we said it. He confirmed it right there. There you go. <laughs> there you Listen, go. Clint, turn up that country music and drive safe. <laughs> I appreciate it, fellas. And hey, thanks for having me, man. It was great to hear from all of you. And uh, keep it going, boys. I know you guys are doing some good things in the soccer world. So if you ever need anything from me, uh, anything like that, don't hesitate to pick up the phone. Appreciate Much you, brother. Appreciate it, Clint. Appreciate it, man. I, yeah, I be safe. Fellas. Thank you, too. My boy's man. a country boy. I love it. Yeah, you didn't know that. I knew. I knew. I know. Uh, he was Georgia. A Georgia. I, I remember. I, I saw the P Diddy of him though. You know here. Yeah. You know what I mean yeah. that that platform. And uh, I know he's already a Georgian boy, but he he can adapt. And he's a he's a definitely a people's person. And he's a person you come into the room. He's gonna snap on you. He's gonna joke you. But he's definitely gonna make you feel 
um, you know, at home. So big shouts out to you, Clint. Well, that was, that and that, was that's a, yeah, no, he has some good stories. And I don't know if I ever said it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I ever said it on the on the podcast or even in, a, in an interview, but what he said about MLS just making you the highest paid player, that's true. They did, this, they did the same shit to me before I went to PSV. Mm, wow. They's like, yeah, they said they don't want me to go to PSV. Obviously, it was going back and forth with the, the transfer fee. And uh, Don Garvey was calling me on my phone after training. I was like, all right, what's it going to take for me to stay? And I was like, I don't know. I, really, I want to go. He's like, all right, well, I'm going to make you the highest paid player in the MLS. Mm. Done. That was it. And I still said no. But mm. yeah, but what he's saying, that's what, you know, that, that was, I, don't, I don't think that's how it is now because of all the, <laughs> all the different rules. But that's how it was back then. That's what they were willing to do to keep their talent, you know what I'm saying, in MLS. So I, 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 I can attest to that. I got the same conversation. Before Makes I sense. I mean, you guys were like the star player. You guys are the star players of the national team, of the league. Yeah. So he's trying to, especially back in those days, trying to gain more attraction to the to the sport, to the league. Right. In the league. Yeah, of course. If you guys trying to dip out. He'd be like, all right, what's it going to take? My yeah. Car, my, yeah. My, my black card. What you do? Yeah. I think I think now I think now more teams obviously have more power. You know what I'm saying? But since it was still a league where it was still growing and uh, we don't have nearly as many teams as we have now in the stadiums and the infrastructure, all that, all the great stuff that MLS has built, you know, these last uh, 20 odd, well, more than 20 years. Um, so, yeah, trying to keep their top talent in, 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 in America was was important. But there was not no conversation with, I guarantee, with Chicago. It was just he's going to do it. You know, the league. You know, so that's what I stepped in and said, you know, the league signed a contract. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if the league, like you said, if the league wanted to put you somewhere, they're gonna put you somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I don't I don't think how I don't think it's like that is I don't think it is how it was back then, but you know, that's how it was back then. How wild without us alluding to anything that he said John, Johnny O was the greatest player in national. Yeah, I mean, we've been saying it. Yeah, we've been everybody know it. it. Yeah. So go back and watch that interview. If you know, you know. Yeah. Try to put that you on. Nasty. And a lot of you guys don't even realize how great Clint Mathis is, right? Make sure you Google that name, hit YouTube for my younger viewers and to ones that really know the real national team fans, you know, right? And um, again, I know I'm in, I'm in mixed with two legends, Aguchi and Yewu, and there's Marcus Beasley. It's always a pleasure catching up with you fellas and I miss you guys. And uh, I wanna make sure that everybody uh, subscribes, rates, shares, like and like <laughs> all right and uh and again uh, we're, we're the best kept secret but um you know if you know people who will enjoy this podcast please share with them organically right we're gonna grow this genuinely this is something that we own that we love to do and um and we keep it moving man so i just want to say this show is brought to you by bet online and demarcus Beasy, what you guys say uh i'm just i'm gonna say that i'm the last one to get a microphone <laughs> <laughs> y'all y'all sound y'all sound great but i sound i sound like shit <laughs> i need to get a microphone i'm a, hey that's gonna be my next purchase after this episode i'm gonna get a, i'm gonna get a microphone I, I change uh cities so i need to get a microphone that's all i gotta say but all right all right y'all till next time till next time yeah, yeah. Peace. peace